Cleveland. And it is time to talk sports day six of the Alpine Bank Junior College World Series. And folks, we are now down to just three teams in this tournament, Titus. Yeah, well, we had a spectacular day today. Four teams trying to get to that championship round. And, you know, they laid it all out on the line in this impressive field right here some amazing fans they put it all out on the line but so far we have the blend buccaneers heading on we have northwest florida raiders and we have georgia highlands they will be as well playing in another game tomorrow we cannot wait to see how this tournament's going to finish but let's check out those highlights from earlier today because we had a wild one as the florence darlington tech stingers fight and fight it and clawed and did everything they could to keep their season alive let's see how it went down Boy, what a game this was to start the day. An elimination game between Blinn and Florence Darlington Tech. And Blinn started hot. This is the second of back-to-back -back homers for the Bucks. Clay Ferraro with the big bat puts Blinn up 5-0 in the second. But just like in every game Flodar is played, they had the answers. Zach Hunt belts it deep into center. And that ball is gone. The Stingers immediately respond with a three-run shot of their own. And here comes Hunt around the bases. Just like that, Flodar is back within a run. Now it's Michael Gibson at the plate, and he connects. And it carries and carries and carries. And gone. There is no question. This is a hitter's ballpark. This game certainly proved that. The Stingers with two dingers here in the third. We are tied at five. And folks, this game was as back and forth as it gets. Here comes the Buccaneers. Coy DeFurry, he belts this into deep, deep into center. That'll drop. And the Blinn Bucks are coming home in bunches. Not one, not two, but here comes the third Blinn Buccaneers. Hit home plate, everything was working at the plate for both of these teams. The three RBI double puts, puts Blinn up nine to five on Flodar, but then of course, the Stingers came back. Rom Kellis hammers it deep in the center, and of course, it is gone as well. Six home runs in this game for Florence Darlington, nine total. I mean, the ball was just flying off the bats all day long, but this game was truly insane. As Blinn looked like they were gonna win it on the run rule in the seventh, but Flodar had the late comeback as they scored 10 straight runs to take the lead late, but Blinn didn't lose back-to-back -back heartbreakers as they find a way to keep their season alive and win a wild game, 21 to 19. Yeah, I mean, just two resilient teams. Nobody wanted to go home. Everybody battling to, to the last out. Um, you know, can't say enough about Flodar and their heart that they showed. We knew, we knew, they showed it the other day. We just happened to be home and uh, he kind of thought we were going to get it done there, you know, three outs from, from the run rule. And man, what are you going to do? They just kept hitting barrels after barrels and uh, just wouldn't go away. So we just had to keep fighting. Wow, Titus. I mean, how incredible was that game? We thought last night's game on Wednesday night was going to be the game of the tournament, but that one might have topped it. It's crazy because it's like every time, especially in that seventh inning, we thought that Blinn was going to run roll. It was going to be over 18-9, to 9, but the Stingers, they just don't go away. Yeah, that was, that's been their DNA the whole time. You know, they, they just battle it out every single time that they get an you know, opportunity at the plate. And it, like we've seen in their previous two games that they, they, they get off to a slow start, but when they get it hot and they get those bats rolling, they are a threat. And we almost seen a terrific comeback from the Stingers, but you got to give credit to the Bucks the, the, of Blinn. You know, they barely make mistakes. They made a few mistakes, which allowed Flor uh, Florence Darlington to get back into this game. But, you know, the pitching from Blinn, they was able to shut it down when they needed it most. And they was able to come out with that win. Lucas Davenport finishes it off for Blinn. And as you mentioned, I mean, Florence Darlington, they completed the comeback in a sense because they had taken the lead. They were once down 18-9, to 10 straight runs, go up 19-18 to 18 in the ninth inning. But credit Blinn because they got back on top and then shut the door in the bottom of the ninth to get that big win as Blinn stays alive and they'll take on Georgia Highlands tomorrow. And Georgia Highlands is playing a game, a big one today with Northwest Florida. Before the game, we had some awesome Challenger baseball festivities. And just before our final game of the day, we had some Challenger baseball on the field for some pregame festivities. And folks, 
it is always a good time when Challenger is there. And let me tell you, these guys were ready to go just before they hit the field. We are getting ready here for Challenger baseball. Who's ready to go for Challenger? So I want to hear as you can see, everyone is getting excited around here for some Challenger baseball. It is going to be so much fun. Indeed it was. And let me tell you, a player told me today that Challenger means more to them than it might even mean to the Challenger kids themselves. So just a special way to start a game is it was a big one tonight. Northwest Florida and Georgia Highlands must win for Northwest Florida. Georgia Highlands just two wins away from a national championship. On the brink of elimination, the Northwest Florida Raiders answered the call, defeating the only remaining undefeated team in the tournament in Georgia Highlands Chargers. Josh Ray Stewart absolutely crushes this one to left field, giving his team an insurance run. Stewart went perfect from the batter's box, going two for two. Up next is Bryce Hubbard, and he's going to join in on the action, sending this one to straight center for a two-run home run. Hubbard went yard twice in this contest, and at this point of the game, the Raiders' confidence was at an all-time high because later on in this game, this happened. Yes, people, a grand slam, grand salami to put the Chargers to bed and put the Raiders in the championship game as Northwest Florida comes out on top in this one, 13-3. What a performance by Northwest Florida today as they clinch their spot on Championship Saturday. The only team still in that game. Titus won a performance by the Raiders today. It was a performance like you said, Will. They came into this game against a Chargers team who had not lost all tournament long. They had some great pitching on their team. And the Raiders came in and said, we're just going to play our game. We're going to play with that confidence that we had all season long. And they was able to put up 15 hits, had three home runs in that one. Uh, and they was able to put up 13 runs in, entire, in, in the entire game. So, you know, you got to tip your caps off to the Raiders because they lost that first game. Right. They played against uh, Iowa Western, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. And they was able to bounce back. We had an interview with the coach, and he said It was that, Southern Nevada, the extra innings game, right? Southern the, Nevada. That was, the, that was the first day on Saturday. They lost in extra innings to Southern Nevada. A weird game on the first day. But oh, man. It, it, no, right, exactly. They've, they've battled back. You're 100% correct. Yeah, and I think it's just with the fact that they all bought in with this team mentality where, you know, forget about the last play, we're going to focus on the next play, and they pick each other up, and they just ex exude with confidence. And you can see it every time they come out onto this field. So hats off to the Raiders, man, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing another rematch between the Blend Buccaneers and the Georgia Highlands. That's coming tomorrow. And as you said, with Northwest Florida, they probably could have put up 20 today if they had played the whole game. Only ended in seven innings with the run rule, but Northwest Florida now has put up 59 runs in their four, last four wins in the tournament. Four and one in the tournament. They started in the loser's bracket because of that first game, that first loss to Southern Nevada, that seven to six loss. But ever since that game, I mean, their bats have just been perfection. <laughs> they have been hitting it like crazy. But as you mentioned, that has now set up the rematch tomorrow night. Friday night, it's Blinn and Georgia Highlands, the same game that was probably the game of the tournament, the walk-off winner right here behind us on Wednesday when Ryan Martin ended it, crushed the ball way deep in the left to win it. Hopefully we'll get another game like that on Friday night. I mean, we better get something close to that game because if we don't, we're going to get – that's a rip-off if we don't get anything <laughs> that's close to that game. Exactly. Because the an energy that was in this stadium last night when Ryan Martin hit that dinger over that mini monster – it was insane. I know Blinn still has that memory and fresh in their head. So they're looking to come out strong and they're looking to uh, put the Georgia Highlands back into Georgia. And I hope the stress levels are okay for the Blinn Buccaneers. They've been through two just insane games the last two days, but they got to be ready because they got to play, as you mentioned, a great Georgia Highlands teams. And look, Titus, we both had our picks before this tournament. Now we're just a game away from getting our two teams. You had the Chargers, the Georgia Highlands Chargers. I had Northwest Florida in the championship. And if the Chargers can get it done, we will have that rematch of tonight's game on Saturday. Whoever wins it on Friday, we're going to have a great game in the championship on Saturday. Can the Raiders, who've been locked in the last few games, get it done? We are just so close to finding out who will be the Alpine Bank Junior College World Series champion. Here from Saplesio Field, that's all our time for sports. He's Titus Cleveland. And I'm... Big Will Levinson.